North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. How are you going to pay for it? We're going to be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you going to find the money? So last Friday, uh, the 6th, uh, the U.S. Labor of uh, the, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, released their latest labor market data. Employment situation uh, summary April 2022, which reported a total payroll uh, employment rise of only 428,000 jobs and an official unemployment rate of 3.6%. However, the labor force uh, survey provided the opposite impression with employment said the said the with employment and the participation rate falling it is difficult at this stage to rec reconcile the two messages except uh, except to say that the u.s labor market has probably reached an inflection point and deter deterioration is emerging as the federal reserve continues to hike r interest rates the U.S. labor market is still 1,190,000 payroll jobs short from where it was at the end of April 2020, which helps to explain why there is no wage pressure emerging. Real wages continue to decline as the supply disruption and the greed of increased corporate profit margin push sustain the Inflationary pressures and any analyst, uh, analyst, excuse me, who is claiming the U.S. economy is closer to full employment, hasn't looked at the data. I was just paid to be so. Um, overall, uh, overview for April of 2022: uh, payroll employment increased by 428,000. Total labor force survey employment fell by 353,000 net, which is minus 0.22%. Uh, 0 the seasonally adjusted labor force fell by 363,000 net, 0.22% also. The employment population uh, ratio fell 0.1% uh, points, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, 0 0.1 points to 60%, and it's still lower than the April 2020 peak of 61.2. Uh, the uh, the employment population ratio fell uh, 0 0.1 points to 60 percent. Uh, okay, so that's still I just I just said that I think official employment unemployment fell by 11,000 to 5,941,000. The official unemployment uh, rate was unchanged at 3.6 percent. The participant rate fell 0 0.2 percent to uh, 0.2 points, excuse me, to 62.2%. <clears throat> the broader labor uh, under, under utilization measure, uh, or U6, uh, rose 0.1 points to 7% as underemployment increased. For those who are confused about the differences between the payroll establishment uh, data and the household survey data, you should read this blog post, U.S. labor market is in a uh, deplorable state. That's there's a link on there for that. Um, where uh, he does, uh, uh, build, explain the difference in detail. Excuse me. Same month, uh, some months the difference is small, while other months the difference is larger. 
the differences were quite large this month. Payroll employment trends. Uh, the BLS noted in quotes, total non-farm payroll employment rose by 420,000 in April. Uh, non-farm employment is down by 1.2 million or 0.8% from its pre-pandemic level in February of 2020. Employment is uh, in leisure and hospitality increased by 70,000 in April. Is, uh, April is down by 1.4 million or 8.5% since February 2020. Manufacturing added 55,000 jobs in April is down by 56,000 or 0.4 percent. Employment is transportory in uh, transportation and warehouse rose by 52,000 in April is 674,000 above its February 2020 level led by strong growth in warehousing and storage, which was plus 467,000. And then carriers and messengers plus 259,000. April, a, uh, employment and professional and business services continue to trend up plus 41,000 since February 2020. Employment in the industry is up by 730,000. Financial activities added 35,000 jobs in April is 71,000 higher than February 2020. Healthcare employment rose by 34,000 in April, reflecting a gain in uh, ambulatory health care services, which was plus 28,000. Employment in healthcare is down by 250,000 or 1.5% since February 2020. Employment in retail trade increased by 29,000 in April. It's 20, is 284,000 above its level in February 2020. In April, whole, uh, wholesale trade employment rose by 22,000 and is down by 57,000 or 1.0% since February 2020. Mining added 9,000 jobs in April with a gain in oil and gas extraction plus 5,000 is 73,000 higher than a recent low in February 2021. These graphs, not myself, I'm not going to read the graphs, but uh, anyway, so the first graph, uh, the monthly change in payroll employment in thousands expressed as uh, a three-month moving average to take out the Monthly notice, the red lines are the annual averages. I left up the observations between January 2020 and September 2020, which were so extreme that the that they made it hard to compare the current period with the pre-pandemic history. The U.S. labor market is still 1,190,000 uh, jobs short from where it was at the end of April 2020 and the and the uh, commentary from the BLS above tells us how short the shortfall is distributed across the sectors. <coughs> the next graph shows the same data in a different way. In this case, the graph shows the average net month monthly change in payroll employment actual for this calendar years from 2005 to 2021. The red mark uh, let's see, the total for 2022 reveals total labor force survey employment fell by 350,000 or zero or minus 0 0.22 percent. Uh, the seasonal adjusted uh, uh, labor force fell by 363,000, uh, which is also a net zero, uh, net uh, minus 0 0.22 0 percent. Uh, the participation rate fell 0 0.2 points to 62.2 percent, uh, ensuring total unemployment uh, hardly shifted despite the loss of employment. As a result, in accounting terms, total, me uh, total measured unemployment fell by 11,000 to 5,000, and the official unemployment rate was unchanged at 3.6 percent. The unemployment population ratio is a good measure of the strength of the labor market because the movement are relatively un unambiguous because the denominator uh, population is not particularly sensitive to the cycle unlike the labor force. See, in April 2022, the ratio fell by 0.1% to 60%. 
it has thus moved up further away from the peak level in uh, April 2020 of 61.1%. Unemployment and underutilization trends. Uh, BLS noted that the unemployment rate remained at 3.6% in April, and the number of unemployed persons was essentially unchanged at 5.9 million. These measures are a little different from their uh, valued in February 2020, 3.5% and 5.7%, uh, respectively, prior to coronavirus, uh, prior to the coronavirus pandemic. Anyway. The number of long-term unemployment, uh, those held, uh, jobless for 27 weeks or more, was little changed at 1.5 million. This measure is 362,000 higher than February 2020. Long-term unemployment accounted for 25.2% uh, of all uh, unemployed persons in April. The number of persons unemployed part-time for economic reasons was little changed at 4.0 or uh, yeah, 4.0 million in April and is down by 357,000 from its February 2020 level. These individuals who would have preferred full-time employment were working part-time because their hours had been reduced or they were unable to find full-time jobs. The, in April, the decline in unemployment was offset and a little more by the decline in labor force as uh, participants fell. Or participation fell, excuse me. That is why unemployment fell as workers left the labor force rather than we absorb into jobs, or uh, then we absorbed into jobs. The official unemployment rate is a narrow measure of labor waste, uh, waste age, which means that a, a strict comparison with the 1960s, for example, in terms of how tight the labor market has to take into account broader measures of labor uh, underutilization. The next um, Total unemployed plus all marginally attached workers plus total employed, employed part-time for economic reasons as a percentage of civilian labor forces plus all marginal attached workers. It is thus the, uh, the broadest quantitative measure of labor underutilization that the BLS, uh, BLS published. Pre-pandemic U6 was 6.8% in December of 2019. In the 2022, the U uh, the U6 measure was six uh, was seven percent, a rise of 0.1 uh, percent on the previous month. Aggregate participation rate fell by 0.2 percent or two points, excuse me, to 62.2 percent. What is the impact of that increase for the actual unemployment situation? We can make two comparisons. One, compare the, the April 2022 with the March of 2020 stay, state. Compare the changes in the last month, the labor force's subset of the working age population, those above 15 years old. The proportion of the working age population that cons constitutes the labor force is called the labor force participation rate. Thus, changes in the labor force can impact on the official force can impact on the official unemployment rate. Anyway, sorry. I'm in the parking lot right now. <laughs> Somewhere I'll just say that. Uh, uh, force to call labor for uh, force participants rate, uh, participation rate. Thus, changes in the labor force can impact on the official unemployment rate and as a result, move, move, no, uh, movements, let me go, make one myself there, uh, and the latter need to be interpreted carefully. A rising unemployment rate may not in indicate a recession, recessing uh, economy. The force can expand as a result of general population growth and or increases in labor force participation rates. There's a table here. If I can just get to that. Okay, so let's see. Yes, it shows that U.S. BLS uh, U6 broad labor utilization rate, which is at you know, below 10% as far as that part goes. Anyway, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, let's start over. Anyway, so the rest of this you can go to uh, bilbo.economicoutlook.com. Uh, I think it's .net. Uh, either way, you can look them up. Uh, Bill Mitchell, 
at Bill Mitchell on Twitter. So, anyway. Uh, that is what I got for today as far as that part goes. Uh, if you want to learn any more about uh, MMT, I would suggest you go to realprogressives.org. Uh, there they have the history of M MMT, the policy for which it uh, advocates for uh, uh, their history, formation, uh, their pillars, stuff of that nature. In fact, I'll just go ahead and if I can, just, if I can get that now. Progressives.org. Let's see. Current and practical examples of modern monetary theory. Backwards. There we go. Okay, so let's see. On there, you would see. Uh, oh, this is just Alice, apparently. Yeah, uh, austerity beatings of Greece will continue. Uh, that's what to say. So, you know what? I'll go. Let's see if I can read that thing. Far. So, bear with me for this. So this is also by William K. Black. Yesterday I read his uh, his articles about the Clinton administration, Paul Krugman, and you know, those between. Anyway, so let's see. Austerity beatings of Greece will continue. And uh, this is as of today. Or no, tomorrow, I suppose. Anyways, until its moral improves, the old joke that conveys a critical truth is that the poster that says that the daily floggings will continue until moral improves around here, in quotes. The Triaka misses the irony in the poster for it thinks that the answer to the Eurozone nightmare problems caused by austerity is more austerity. The latest example is the three IMF stories that ran contemplatively the IMF again lowered global growth forecast to the IMF is calling for fiscal stimulus rather than austerity. Three, the Eurozone wants to inflict more severe austerity on Greece. Purportedly to make the IMF happy, if you, if you sense a logical disconnect, you, you are right. And quotes the, in quotes, the downside risk to the, the global economic outlook have increased since October, raising the possibility of a more generalized slowdown and a sudden pullback of, pullback of capital flows. The International Monetary Fund's top policy advisor and committed said, oh, committee said, not committee, but committee said in a statement following a meeting in, on uh, Saturday in Washington. To achieve strong global growth, we will employ a more piece of more forceful and balanced policy, mixed the panel said. The statement reflects policymakers' concern that expansion will slow after the IMF uh, this week downgraded its global outlook again, uh, warning that prolonged period of slow growth has left the world ec economy at risk of slipping into stagnation. Using all policy tools is vital to stimulate actual and potential growth, enhance financial stability, and avert deflation risk, according to the, uh, the communique from the panel known as the International Monetary Fund Committee. The panel advises the Board of Governors of the 189-member nation uh, IMF Orthodox Economist, uh, a poor plan, uh, plain English, oops, uh, quotes a more forceful and balanced policy mix and, and quotes using all policy tools and IMF code for our IMF code for we need to add a lot of fiscal stimulus by increasing government spending. The IMF for decades has been the worst of the austerity hawks. So given the IMF advice to, mo to move to increase fiscal um, 
Simulus. What is the Eurozone doing to end its daily flogging of Greece through austerity? Greece's creditors are considering seeking extra austerity measures that would be triggered if Athens uh, misses its fiscal target in a bid to bribe to bridge, excuse me, differences between Europe and the IMF and break the deadlock between uh, threatening to unravel the Greek bailout. Under the proposal, says say officials involved in the discussion, Greece would have to sign up to so-called contingency measures of up to about 3 billion euro on the top of the package of about 5 billion in tax increases and spending cuts Greece and its lenders are already negotiating. The country would only have to implement the extra measures if it falls short of targeted budget surpluses for coming years that we set out in last year's bailout agreement, the official said. The idea, which has support from the Eurozone's dominant power, Germany, hasn't yet been agreed upon, and officials on the creditors' side say it would be politically hard for Greece, uh, Greece's embattled government to swallow. <clears throat> so, if as, so if as before, austerity grip, cripples Greece's growth and the cause, uh, causes it to miss the austerity pro, uh, budget targets demanded by the uh, Trioka, uh, no, Trioka, Trioka, excuse me, the Eurozone plans to demand that Greece commit to, to even more destructive extra austerity. The Euro austerity, Eurozone's austerity policies demonstrate the power of the ideology over economics. Our response to the oh, austerity beatings of Greece, okay. So that will be it, it looks like. Yeah. So, thank you for, for tuning in to these pretty much three segments, uh, act, uh, active, three segments, anyway. Uh, subscribe to this channel and support realprogressives.org. Uh, you can donate to them, you can share their stuff, you can uh, learn MMT through them. Um, again, MMT is a is out, is outside of the of the normal economic stage. So if you speak about this with other people who think they know about economics, uh, you'll have a very interesting conversation and not very enlightening if you are if you are very um, established uh, within the MMT world you'll you'll find so many things wrong with what someone else says but they're so they could be so entrenched in their own economic uh, thoughts that they don't want to take other theories or actually coming up with realities uh, like MMTs uh, MMT policies and actually I got I get that part wrong MMT uh, is not policies it's a way of looking at how the the economy actually works it's the opposite of how the economy actually works right now or at least uh, what people think it works right now because if you look up every like someone like a Mike Norman who has been who's worked on Wall Street numerous for numerous firms uh, he himself uh, I believe has one open right now uh, and you can look him up at pitbull dot, uh, pitbull economics uh, pitbull economics dot com you can also check him out on YouTube as well uh, at uh, you just put in uh, Mike Norman MMT and he'll, uh, his page will come up if you listen watch and look everything he says up and literally everything he says is correct literally everything uh, that I'm not sm I'm not blowing a smoke up his butt I have done it myself this is this is why I recommend him in regards to that this is why I recommend MMT because everything that MMT has said has been correct literally everything and for those who criticize it they literally pick and choose different things about MMT to criticize but the criticism but their criticism is not valid their criticism is in bad faith uh, they try to get um, the they, they try to get a uh, uh, lesser uh, acknowledged or not knowledgeable MMTers, people who are just getting into it, uh, they try to give them like gotcha questions, like where money comes from and stuff of that nature. You know, 
or stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, if you're in doubt, look up Warren Mosler. Uh, he's the architect behind the modern monetary theory. Uh, even now, sometimes he doesn't want to acknowledge that you know some of the things he got are part of other things. I think deep down inside, he realizes that part, but he doesn't know how to explain it. I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's just what I get in regards to that. Uh, but look him up. Look up MMT, Modern Monetary Theory. Um, once you know enough about it, any supposed debunking uh, stuff you'll see on YouTube or any uh, article, you'll be able to debunk yourself, uh, whether it be on something like this or in writing or if someone were to criticize MMT for this or that, you can come back and actually have a natural question or have an answer for their question. That's precise to the point and very very much correct. Anyway, so uh, is MMT the uh, the ultimate ultimate answer? It is if you want to learn about economics. It is if you want to be able to interpret uh, uh, inter interpret <laughs> if you want to if you want to be able to see what economics is really like. That's what MMT is about. Period. Uh, it's not about policies. Uh, it's, it's not about um, ma it's not about making policies. It's about um, about seeing what the policies are and what the problems are within those policies and stuff of that nature. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Check out realprogressives.org. Check out Stephanie Tilton's books, uh, The Deficit Myth. Check out Warren Mosler. Uh, I believe his uh, his website is uh, MoslerEconomics.com. Uh, check him out either way. Uh, check out who is it? Um, Bill Mitchell, as I just said. Um, check out Mike Norman. Check out who else? El Randall Ray. You know those people. Those are the experts in in in, in MMT. And if you want to learn from the best, learn from them. Um, me, I'm I'm still very new at this. That's why my my channel is called. Just Calvin the learning uh, MMT through a cloudy lens because a lot of the stuff that I that I I have gone and that I have learned the the sequence uh, is not right yet, but the the substance is correct. It's just the way of being able to and, uh, and uh, communicate it and and think of the sequence uh, how you put one and one together in regards to that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace out for now. Hashtag learn MMT. Uh, and again, check out realprogressives.org. Peace out for now. North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. How are you going to pay for it? We're going to be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you going to find the money? Hey, here's a little rant. So, uh, there are, I've seen a lot of people keep asking, how do we make uh, the overall economy better? First, first things first, I would do anyways if I was in charge is permanent middle class um, tax breaks. Everyone in a tax bracket gets a tax break permanently uh, or for as long as you stay within that tax bracket. Two, raise the minimum wage to a livable wage which is not 15 bucks an hour, has been 15 bucks an hour for the past 20 years as far as I'm concerned. With inflation for the past 30 years, I would suggest that uh, be 40 to 45 dollars an hour. While uh, there are industries that make less than that, that the participants or workers in those industries went to college and were able to actually successfully go through college, graduate, and get this kind of jobs, they should almost they should also get a pay raise to at least 80 bucks an hour. Um, two, oh no, sorry, three, uh, job guarantee. MMT is one of the, it was one of those, uh, uh, 
communities that always always go with uh, with job guarantees because that helps people who have lost their jobs to be able to find a job that is paid that is paid by the federal government that will keep them employed and keep them more desirable to hire by other by his private sector employers. Right now, unemployment, which is apparently the way that they um, handle inflation, uh, is as I said, unemployment. And the problem with unemployment is you get a certain amount, you know, uh, a little less than what you were getting, but your skills may or may not diminish, and you, and the desirability of hiring that person comes less and less because they there's so much depending on how long it takes for the person actually to get a job. There's much more of a gap. Like for instance, I've been I've been on social security for the better part of what five years or so, uh, maximum actually seven years um, this year. If I wanted to get a job, I wouldn't be able to because of, because there was such a gap in my work history. They'd be asking me how uh, how I've been supporting myself. Of course, I'd have to say Social Security, and they'd be asking me, "Well, why did you get Social Security? What uh, what disabilities did you have, that, or do you have, and what has changed to make you be able to go and to go back in the workforce?" And I would have to say, "Well, I can't live off of my Social Security. I have to get a, I had to get a job in order to be able to supplement what Social Security doesn't pay for." So that's the reason why a job guarantee uh, by the federal government, as I said, uh, would help when it comes to that because it provides uh, employment for those who have been laid off or the positions they were, they, they were involved in a, a job, whether that had discontinued or upgraded past their skill set. Fourth, every country we have tariffs on, get rid of them because tariffs are a tax on the consumers. If a company has to pay extra to bring in a good in order for it to be able for it to be serviced to customer to their customer base, that cost gets sent to the customer. So therefore, you may be losing customers because maybe. Depending on the kind of product you have and the quality of the product, they may not be willing to come back and and uh, repurchase. Um, let's see. Uh, the housing rent. Put a cap on these bigger real estate companies like Black like a Black Black Rock and like Blackstone. Which I forget which one, but one of them is actually a outside investment. Um, uh, outside investment company where they allow people from outside the country to uh, pay for property and uh, to to buy it uh, internationally uh, actually we're, we're the only countries I know of that has a basically I don't know if it has a cap on it in terms in the terms of um, uh, limiting the amount of property that uh, a foreign a, a foreign government or a foreign company can actually purchase if there isn't there should be in regards to that because then that means that you're not crowding out um, in-country uh, uh, investors, uh, homeowners, or uh, people who want to buy a home. Uh, it's the same thing with, uh, with again, I'm not sure which one, but just uh, in general, uh, big real estate uh, companies, because when they buy up all the property, they tend to do the one thing that they claim that, that people who like, um, like myself, MMT, uh, they, they they do what they claim MMP does, which is which is uh, um, crowding on investment, which is actually the total opposite. Um, if anything, MMT allows for competitiveness uh, within the open market for anybody who wants to either, you know, whatever the asset is. Um, my point there is. The more of the cap that is on any investment uh, in regards to retail, commercial, um, residential, or uh, or entity being outside the country, um, then that means that more and more people within that country will have a, will be able to buy and actually continue doing doing what they do. Um, let's see what else. And as far as politicians go. Obviously, they are in the market. Uh, they're in the market to have their votes paid for. As in, in other words, 
you pay for you donate to them or whatever else um, and then they will vote in the way that you want them to vote that's how it's been for the past 30 40 years uh, it, that's the reason why they don't want to reestablish Glass Steagall. Glass Steagall, which, if I saw this right, um, separate all of the financial everything. Investment uh, was by itself. Um, investments, insurance, banking, all of it was by itself. Uh, mortgage lenders were by themselves. Uh, you 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 had to go to separate entities to be able to take advantage of whatever opportunity you could. When Glass Steagall was taken out, that put them all in one place, which meant that anybody who uh, had any kind of mortgage investments that they wanted to uh, lend out or whatever the case may be, uh, people could come in and, like, you know, all in one place. Well, a lot of times that's going to, that, that's, you, you, you're going to have people on inve investing other people's money on investments that they may not want. So especially on a speculative um, uh, mor uh, mortgage styling and all that other stuff. That part is kind of new to me still, kind of. So what I do know is selling, uh, uh, leasing or selling a, a certain uh, a certain yeah, I'm gonna to have to get back to that because I don't, I'm, I'm not fully apprised of what that is. Um, anyways, my point being is the fact that all of this stuff I have learned while studying modern monetary theory, um, and this is just what I want to say as far as this part goes. Uh, uh, I've started to, as I said before, I've started to volunteer with, with real progressives. Um, they are both uh, supposed to, you know, they, they are both for progressive issues as well as the economic issues. So I'm socialist, so I'm not a progressive as far as the part goes. I'm, but I'm also socialist by policy, not by party. So that's one thing. That's one of the things that keeps me away from Democrats, or because they're all talking, they're all they're they move more to the right. Since Clinton, anyway. Um, but if you want to learn more about MMT or about whatever else in regards to that, uh, go to realprogressive.org. Um, that's all I got to say for, for now until I get home, and then I'll be able to do a whole other thing. Peace out for now.